Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Blue's Storytime featuring Death Stranding. Now, we have already seen an absolute ton of story, lore implications, a lot of characters that we need to discuss, but one thing I want to talk about right away before we even examine the room is the idea of void outs. I asked a question in the last episode, and a lot of you came to my rescue, and I did a little digging on my own, but it seems that anyone who dies can become... A BT, which by the way, feel free to correct me down in the comments below. Anyone who dies can become a BT, and that's why they have to take them elsewhere and they have to incinerate them away from populated cities. Otherwise, the chiralium that the burned bodies give off uh, can. can uh, actually, I don't know. I don't know what the chiralium does. They talk about chiralium density. I don't know if maybe that attracts BTs or maybe that opens up some sort of gateway, which by the way, I don't even know what BT stands for. I don't think that's been explained, but hopefully we'll examine that a little bit further. But in order for a dead body or a human body to produce a void out, it actually has to be consumed by a BT. So that's actually what happened when I was with the corpse disposal team. The body was consumed, and that's what caused the void out. It wasn't simply that they necrotized and, and initiated the void out. So thank you all for uh, helping me out there. Now, before we actually go out and see what deliveries we have to make, let's examine the room. There's a lot to see here. Some things are just kind of cool little aesthetics. So this shelf will actually change a little bit, as will the table over there that has some figurines. So this is the corpse disposal team vehicle, and that is Igor, and I don't think we ever got the name of the driver. I don't, unless that's Sam on the left. It's a little bit hard to see. But we also have a sink here. Now, this sink, it's really just for fun. You can take some cool little screenshots here, but this is really all it is. Just for you to sit and make funny faces at and, well, be Norman Reedus, I guess. Now, you might think, oh, okay, so they added a shower and a toilet it's not just for a gimmick in fact taking showers using the toilet both sitting and standing are going to be really important in fighting off bts as you're out making your delivery so actually we're going to do each of these in succession to see what happens devoted to uncovering the secrets of the beaches and the Death Stranding, as well as those of Dooms and Repatriates. The shower in your room was designed with chiral decontamination in mind. Chiral matter can adversely affect hormone secretion and nervous function. There's a correlation between exposure and the development of phobias, as well as, in extreme cases, violent and suicidal impulses. Chirelian contamination has even been postulated as a trigger for the onset of Dooms. I should add that these showers have another function. The collection of blood, hair, fluids, and other natural waste products. They provide a non-invasive means to monitor your exposure to Corellium and your overall health. And I freely admit a chance to study the unique properties of your physiology. You being a repatriate and all. So actually, we just got some more information about what chiralium can do. It can actually trigger the onset of dooms, whatever this affliction is that is currently impacting Sam as well as Fragile. Great little meta joke there with Norman Reedus' ride on the AMC. So it actually looks like we can't do anything with it yet, but spoiler alert, we'll eventually be able to get grenades from my shower water. Yes, this is gamer bath water essentially, as well as uh, number one and number two grenades, which can be very effective. Hey 
there. Believe we've met. I oversee delivery operations as well as maintenance and repairs. Nice to have you on board. I'm Mama, in case I didn't mention it before. Those there are strands. Not just used for packing, by the way, but for identification, too. Take a closer look and you'll see. See the red there? That's your blood. And of course, BB is now down here with us in the pod. Sam, this is Deadman. I calibrated your BB based on physiological data we collected from you earlier. It's still just a best guess though. After you take it out for a spin, we can check if you're in sync and tweak the BB sensitivity as needed. Now, there is a relationship meter of sorts between BB and Sam, and we'll be kind of exploring that as we go. Every time I come to my room, chances are you'll see me soothe BB, although, frankly, it's not always as soothing, but I'm sure you'll see that sooner rather than later. By the way, this little keychain that hangs off the pod, yes, this was part of Igor's attire. Um, this is going to come into play a little bit later, but also this seems to be at least a mock-up of the new icon for Kojima Studios. This case will remove any chiral matter still clinging to your suit. Uh, speaking of suits, blue is for delivery personnel, red for medical, orange for corpse disposal, and black for security. I don't think we can do very much with the color scheme just yet. And we can do something with the mask. I, I kind of like doing that. I think the Omni Reflector is actually pretty cool. And what about the lens? Can we... Yeah, I like that. Why not? One thing with Monster, and yes, this is a latent product placement. I'm not really sure why he did this. You can actually see it looks like Kojima's logo back on the cup there. But there is actually a benefit to drinking the Monsters while you're still in your room. And I like to do this before every outset, every delivery. And I think you need to drink three of them, but you'll get maximum stamina this way. So always remember to unleash the beast. But seriously, if you're going to drink energy drinks, please do so in moderation. So you can see in the bottom left, my endurance, my stamina bar has actually gone up by 10% and I can go up to 25%. So I'm just going to do these two more times. I'll just skip them for you though. There we are. So now we have the maximum of 25% extra stamina, which is really nice. BTs are something, something terrible. So it looks like this is depicting coming back from the crematorium where we delivered the president's body. And actually, now that I realize that I can zoom in, let me go back to these figures. I want to see if that's Sam there on the left. It probably is. Oh, wow, that did not zoom in much at all. Let me know what you think. Is that Sam on the left? Also, I look ridiculous in these glasses. Now, the terminal, there's a lot of information that will appear in the terminal. My plan for this playthrough is to highlight some of the more important emails that we get. You're going to get some from Hartman and from Deadman that really do 
shed some light on our current situation and i want to highlight those i don't want to read everything though because some of it is just filler flavor text so right now we're going to take a look and see what we have but going forward i'll probably examine it before i start recording so i can highlight what's important If we had any active orders, we could take care or take a look at those here. Some data. Right now, we actually don't have anything interesting to see. We just have the gameplay tips, which if you're like me, you absolutely hate when you have all of these exclamation points. And it seems like it's something important you have to read. And you get a lot of gameplay tips in Death Stranding. That actually seems to be about it for now. So that makes our job a lot easier. But we will be checking this frequently and you can also track your progress and see how far across the country you've made it. But I think that's enough stalling. Let's head topside and see what plans are in store for us today. Well, have you had a chance to think it over? Chock full of Chirelium, but safe for you Dooms guys to wear. Now it's all you'll need to go forth and reconnect the world. To make us whole again. I'm a porter. I don't care about connecting anything. Or making knots. But I'll do what I have to, to help Amelie out. Listen up, Sam. The terminals Amelie's people built in the towns and cities they passed through on their journey west are called knots. The infrastructure's there, but the Cairo network is offline. Right now, it's only capable of transmitting voice communications, sometimes wired, sometimes wireless, and a small amount of data. So, unless the necessary data stored on site, our chirograms won't show up. Emily and the other Bridges members you've seen around the place are grams generated with local data. In case you didn't know. Anyway, all you've got to do is find the knot, connect your cupid, and bring Cairo communications online. Once you connect it to the terminal, you'll be able to initiate zero-time massive data transmission with the UCA network. And just like that, you'll reconnect us not only to each other, but to our past. All the lost and fragmented junk data will be compiled and restored. Like bringing a dinosaur back to life from a fossil. Four point six billion years of history on Earth. All the wisdom and knowledge we lost since the Death Stranding will be ours again. And that, my friend, is how we'll beat this thing. Once you establish Cairo communications, generating grams won't be an issue. You'll also be able to use Cairo printers. Won't be long before we're able to send all kinds of things through the wire. Except anything original. Or that's got a soul. Nothing real. Just copies. True. Which is why we'll still need porters like you. 
Before and after we're made whole, we'll need men in the middle. No rest for the wicked, huh? Yeah, well, idle hands and all that. We'll give you the details at the dispatch terminal. Make sure you check it upstairs. Drop's waiting up there, too. These shoes look like they've done some serious miles. Shall I dispose of them? Wait. Hold on. There's something I want you to look into. My blood seemed to set those things off. Happened more than once. Set them off? How do you mean? I don't know. You took my blood, didn't you? You tell me. All right. I'll see what I can do. Hmm. Now there's one thing that I've always been wondering and I haven't figured it out in my previous time playing Death Stranding but Dead Man has a scar across his forehead with a very extensive scar from left to right. It doesn't look like an injury as much as it looks like a surgical scar so I'm wondering do we ever learn about the origins of that scar or is it just left to our imagination also? How about Mads Mikkelsen playing BB's father in those little flashbacks? Pretty impressive that this BB actually has that kind of memory capacity that we're able to tap into, I guess, because of our connection. But let's see what delivery we have available. Sam, this is Die Hardman. Your current objective is to extend the Cairo network from here to Port Knot City. But don't think you can make a beeline straight for it. Signal won't carry that far. To cover the distance, we need to utilize knots. Think of it like uh, tying ropes together to make a longer rope. The first of these knots is a bridge's way station. Go ahead and take a look at the order. Deliver whatever they need and connect the cupid. So for this, we need to bring smart drugs to the way station that's west of Capital Knot City. You can see that up kind of northwest of our location. It is only 1.5 kilograms. It's very lightweight. We can see how many likes we're going to get. We can also see the conditions down in the bottom left. It has to have less than 50% damage taken. So absolutely. Sam, order summaries may contain information critical to your success. Make sure to review them before getting underway. There's a lot going on on this screen, and I would be lying if I said I understood absolutely all of it, but you are able to investigate at least some of it. And let's see. So we can kind of go through, here's the cargo condition, deliver the smart drugs, smart drugs that we need to deliver oxytocin, supplies, we're going to be given some ladders and an anchor, so in case we need to do any climbing. And how do we... Oh, 
we can kind of get a look at the terrain here. We can tip it just like we could if we were on our way. Now this is showing us the straightest line, which is not always the best option. You can kind of carve your own route if that is how you want to do it. But the problem is, here's we have, that's where the incinerator is. And if we were to go the incinerator route, we could in theory take this little valley right here, but then we still have, well, we're kind of really out of the way. So this definitely makes the most sense. Cross a couple of small streams, kind of right in this estuary area cut across that low hill and then we just have a couple more bigger rivers to cross but this is where the ladder can come into play so here's we have or so here we have the opportunity to arrange i have found that almost in every case it's easiest just to load it all and then i can use the auto arrange feature to put it where it best makes sense We've supplied you with some rope and a ladder for this run. They should help with the steeper inclines, and the ladder will also make a halfway decent bridge if you need to cross a river. Right now, I figure you're thinking about how you want to handle this order. These are some of the supplies that will not only help you on your delivery, but can be accessed by other players to use their delivery or to make their deliveries. So by helping yourself, you're also helping others, which is just such a cool feature. So what do we have? Let's see. Ladders weigh five kilograms each. So I can put it on the side there, kind of balance it. If I put one there, we have another one. Looks like I can't actually put it on the other side. So we'll just put it on the back. Oh, and actually that just put everything. So now we have only a total of 27.3 kilograms out of a maximum of 120. You can see that down at the bottom, but that's plenty because there's gonna be more that we can pick up along the way and either deliver to the way station or back here at our current destination. So we have four total ladders, a climbing anchor, we have our bridge boots, and we're also wearing boots. So if these were to run out, which this is not a very long run, we should be fine, but we do have an extra pair that we can bring with us because you don't want to wear your boots out. Trust me, probably at some point we'll do it just so you can see the implications. So at this point, holding right on the directional pad gives us the option to place a ladder, place a climbing anchor, or even actually relieve ourselves. And this isn't just, again, for, I don't want to say flavor, that's a terrible word to use when we're talking about urination, but it actually causes certain things to happen. In fact, it can be a good way of causing crypto bio to spawn in a dangerous area, but you need to have urine saved up. And we do have 429, almost half a liter at this time. So we'll probably stop off and do that. I know it's a bit strange to say that for a, a let's play, but here we are, Death Stranding. Sam, you see that sign someone left over there? You can leave some of your own if you'd like. Messages, warnings, words of encouragement, whatever comes to mind. Signs can tell you a lot of things. It can tell you where there's shelter. It can tell you where there are BTs. Or, in the case of this one by Nick Easton, it actually restored our stamina. So be on the lookout for these signs. And then, you know, thank the person that left them. Granted, this is an NPC. So why don't we take a moment, and actually we can put up our own sign. Why not? We'll put one up. Let's see what sign we want to do. Something encouraging, perhaps. How about a don't give up? I like it. Don't give up. Granted, they just set out, so hopefully they wouldn't. But now I think we should actually just plan our route a little bit. We also have some map markers that I would like to take off. So let's remove. Oop.
There we are. So we're going there. If we just drag this, we'll go right across these rivers here to maybe here. I want to kind of stay a little bit close to the coast just so I don't have to climb too, too much. And then we'll go up. We'll cross to this little island over and then to our destination. That's the plan. Let's do a scan, see if there's anything nearby. Wow. Yes, there are. Sam, even the best porters have been known to lose their cargo. But you're better than the best. You've got what it takes to finish what they started. If you come across any abandoned shipments, consider taking them to their intended destination. It's easier than you might think. See, all our packages are tagged with Bridges IDs for easy tracking. And your Odra deck is equipped with a scanner which might detect said IDs. Which is a roundabout way of saying that that thing on your shoulder can help you locate mislaid shipments. Now, all of the dropped cargo that we just saw is for Capital Not City. Remember, Sam, every parcel is a promise made to a person in need. And they're counting on you to deliver. So if we're just leaving Capital Not City and we're heading to the way station, it doesn't make sense to pick up that cargo now. And this game is a lot about figuring out what you need to do and when. Which, by the way, speaking of things I need to do, I did talk about the need to uh, relieve myself. So I think we'll do just that. Luckily, you don't really see a whole lot. And now you can actually see that there's a little mushroom that's starting to grow. This will continue to grow and become a large fungus covered rock structure where the cryptobiotes can spawn. Everything about this game is just bizarre. Sam, a well placed ladder can get you safely across most rivers, you know. Maybe try using the one we issued you. We could use a ladder, but all of these streams are rather small, so I would much rather hold on to them. Now granted, we did bring four with us, and they're pretty easy to make, so maybe I should just be using them. Tell you what, the next next crossing we will. Sam, remember that prolonged exposure to time fall damages cargo containers. Don't stay out in the rain any longer than you have to. So we're getting another experience with Timefall, which by the way, these containers right here, you can drop stuff off or you can sometimes take stuff from there just in case you're lacking in supplies or if you have anything extra and they are safe from Timefall. The problem with Timefall also is that they are typically accompanied by BTs and you can see those strands in the sky. A couple of more drops here just for Capital Not City. We'll have to be using our scanner quite a lot. You can see that the Odra deck, it does try and point in the direction of the nearest BT.
any time the Ojo deck changes positions like that, I like to do a scan to see where they are so I can stop, replan my route, hold my breath. That was very close. All of these Kyralian crystals that I can't do anything with because I don't have the tool yet. You can actually see the way station not too far. First time I think we've heard of gazers, and frankly, I'm not sure what they are. So we'll have to keep our ears open to figure out what a gazer is. Is there anything here for the way station? So the time fall has stopped, or at least we're beyond the time fall. BT territory is behind us. We're actually completely safe now to just run towards our destination, which is just up there. You can see there is another building up there. We will be traveling to that eventually. Just see if there's anything, anything at all for us to pick up. Now this actually is not the best route. I did not plan it appropriately. What I want to do is simply go down here and use a ladder as soon as I can, which I should be able to use one right here. Yeah, that'll work. So if anyone is following in my footsteps, feel free to use my ladder and, uh, you know, drop me a like or two. Uh, on the ladder, not the video, but, you know, you can do that too if you feel so inclined. Not sure if that quite makes it. Hey, just barely. Just long enough, perfect. In Death Stranding, you don't want to become overburdened, but you don't want to go out unprepared either. You really want to make sure that you have enough equipment that you can safely navigate the terrain, but also some of the obstacles you're going to run across. But here we are, at the way station west of Capital Not City. And now we get our results screen. So again, I'll just be skipping all of this. You're with the second team, right? Where are the others? Dead. Caught in the void out. No way. That one blast got them all? And what, they just sent you out on your own? 
I mean, if it was just a delivery, that'd be one thing. Porters come through from time to time, but... The second team was meant to bring the Cupid. They were gonna connect us up. Three years we've been waiting for help. Three years! And they sent us one guy who... Shit, shit, shit! Tell me you brought more than the Oxy, at least. I've got the Cupid. You... Really? So it's true. They finally got it working. Well, then you just might be the answer to my prayers. So, what are you waiting for? But you, you put us on the goddamn grid? So now we have another chiral network connection. So we can use post boxes. We can actually construct them, which is great. There's some new options to delivery terminals. And we can also see some new items on the map, which is very helpful. City confirmed. It's really happening. Just like Amelie promised. We can finally do what we came here to do. Hey, you're headed west, right? Gonna be a lot of people happy to see you. I guess you'll keep on until you head the coast, huh? Which means you'll get to see Amelie in person. Oh, that's something. That is really something. I... Me, I've never met her. Only seen her hollow messages back when I was with the first expedition. Well, anyway. You best be careful on the road. There's some bad people out there. More than good, some say. <laughs> but I don't need to tell you that. Thank you, Sam. By bringing that way station into the Cairo network, you've put it in direct contact with those of us back here in Capital Knot City. Right. What's next? West of the way station are a couple of structures our previous expedition put in place. And beyond them is your next destination, Fort Knot City. It's on the shore of a crater lake that formed after the first void out. Your objective is to link up Port and Capital Knot. But to do that, you'll need to utilize our facilities as additional waypoints. They'll be essential for establishing a stable connection. Given the distance we need to cover, we're looking at using a distribution center and a power station. As to which you should head for first, Start with the distro center. We've got some cargo that needs delivering anyway. Check the nearby delivery terminal to pick it up. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. So now we have options available, but I will tell you the wind farm so far in my experience playing this game is the worst destination and you need to bring supplies you want ladders you want climbing anchors you want as many as you can carry because it is treacherous and it is filled with bts but let's see what deliveries we have available your hard work's paying off sam thanks to the increase in network capacity hq is now in a position to provide you with additional materials and support should prove useful let's see what we can fabricate so we can make ladders, we can make climbing anchors. Sam, you can use that PCC to build a post box. I usually find enough post boxes that I don't need to make my own, but the PCCs are going to be a lot more useful when I can build more things with them. Does it want me to make one? No, it doesn't. It was just telling me more about it. So you can see what it costs. So right here, this costs 20 metal, a climbing anchor takes 16 resins, and a PCC takes 32 resins and 40 metals. And there's gonna be different materials like the Kyrillian crystals down the line. Now, I don't have any on me, but this station does have some. Most stations will have some available, especially if you're delivering extra cargo or if you have anything that you can scrap and recycle. 
but more on that later. But for now, if we needed anything else, we certainly could. Climbing anchor, I have one on me and I still have two ladders. I think I'll maybe grab two more. So when you click on it, you bring up this second menu, which you can say exactly how many you want. I just want two, so that's gonna take, it's gonna weigh 10 kilograms and that'll cost 40 metals. There we are, I can just load all those. So I'm at 25.8 out of 120. So that's just my supplies at this point. Oop, I actually wanna confirm that. And now we need to see what orders we have. So rare metals for the distribution center and construct a post box. I guess we can do that. It's a really quick way to do it. We might as well. And then of course we'll grab these rare metals for the distribution center. To build a post box, you'll need to use a PCC. It goes without saying, but if you're not already carrying a PCC, you'll want to fabricate one. We'll just do one. Starting to get a little heavy. We're about half of our maximum and we're getting a little top heavy, but we should be okay. Let's auto range, see if it changes anything. Okay, it did attach them to our suit. So we're a little bit more stable left to right. We can actually see where he wants us to place that. It's actually on this little peninsula, this stretch of land. So I can just go use my ladder to get to the center there. Just watch our weight. I should say our balance, not our weight. That sounded really self-conscious. Now you can still sprint, but sprinting does increase your instability. Oh, the skin of my teeth. The, the heavier you are, the more your stamina will go down as well. So take frequent breaks, drink a monster, which. This is my gameplay advice speaking, not my personal or professional. You'll also find these too. So this is just resin, so this can be delivered to any destination, and then that destination will have 80 resins for your use. I don't need them right now. So instead, I just want to go build this and get out of the time fall. Now we're getting some more deliveries that we can make to the way station. I'm not going to focus on the extra deliveries right now unless I'm already headed to that zone. Instead, I'll be doing some of that off camera. Sam, I see you've arrived at the designated site. Good. When you're ready to proceed, activate your PCC. Use it to build a post box within the area I specified. not terrible advice. I'm not going to do that right now. I want to get out of the time fall. I don't want any of my current equipment or the materials that I need to bring to the distribution center. I don't want those getting destroyed or even damaged if I can help it. It sounds like the time falls letting up. So let's take a moment to plan our route. Let's actually get rid of these custom markers. 
there we are. So we have a ladder here. The distribution center is on this side of the river. It seems pretty straightforward because you can just follow the creek here and get here. And we'll see if it's as easy as it appears. So we'll go there. We're just going to follow. Lots of markers just to keep my way. And there we have it. Someone asked me in the comments if I was adding the music manually or if it was just happening automatically in the game. And I'll tell you, it, it does happen automatically at certain points in the game. Uh, and it's it's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Here's a ladder I could pick up by Ray MK. So this is player-based. You know, why not? Now, it says that I'm nearing my carry capacity. I didn't think I was that heavy. I actually wasn't trying to hold my breath there. I was trying to... There's a way to actually gauge distances. Now the problem we're gonna run into is a new thread. It's not the BTs, but you can see these little markers right here. This is going to scan for delivery tags. And well, you'll see. See over there to the right, that person is not friendly. Sam, don't get too close to mule territory unless you have to. Focus on your deliveries for now. Now it's a weird thing, but fortunately the BTs showed up, otherwise mules at this stage can be extremely difficult to deal with. As long as the Odor deck isn't picking up any nearby BTs though, we can just continue on. As soon as it comes out though, then it's time to start scanning. And look at that, Nahuel Nuxus has now used my ladder. And I just, that's one of my favorite things about this game is the asynchronous, it's not even multiplayer so much, just the ability to help someone else that you've never even met. I, I love it. That's actually what drew me to this game. Yeah, it's Kojima, yeah, he's weird, but it was honestly and truly just the ability to interact with people that I would never see, I would never speak to, and just have the option to help them. Once I get to the halfway point, that's when I do plan on starting to drink again. Now you can actually see there's a structure up on that cliff and it's not a bad idea to go and tag that on the way. We might go and do that now that I think about it. It's not too far out of the way and as long as there's no BTs up here, which there may be, I'm not sure. 
We could actually use a climbing anchor once we get to the top so we can get down easy. Almost time to replenish that stamina. This is a completely optional area, Luden's fan. You never need to come here, but it's kind of a nice little stop off. Except, maybe you can't just yet. Maybe we actually have to activate the distribution center first. That could be, but I think what I'll do, since I'm here, just to make it a little easier for next time. That way, I don't always have to make that climb. As long as it's less than 30 meters. And we'll just bring it down as far as we can. And then other people can use that as well. Excellent. Anytime I'm going down a steep hill like that, I do like to just hold both of the shoulder buttons, the L2 and the R2. Going a little bit fast here. I think I will use this time to take a drink. See, we're starting to take some damage here. Luckily, it's only the container. So the rare metals themselves haven't been damaged, only the containers themselves. Once the container's destroyed, that's when they're gonna start taking damage. We're not too far, though. Stay nice and quiet, hold your breath when you can. You know there's one over to the left. Not too far because the Odr oh no. Cargo's been ruined. We have to get out of the time fall. So BB is suffering from autotoxemia, which means we can no longer scan for BTs. We can scan, but I don't think the BTs will show up. Luckily, there's a distribution center. Time falls letting up. When the strain on your BB exceeds sustainable levels, it triggers the production of harmful compounds, and the body, in essence, begins to attack itself. It's called autotoxemia. 
your BB's not performing to spec, drop by your private room and see if the incubator helps. And just in case you saw what I saw, that is a vehicle and I do use that a lot. Being able to, it's not fast travel, but to go a lot faster and especially even the ability to outrun BTs and even the mules can be really helpful. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. Verifying ID. Clear. All weapons will remain on. Cargo verified. Decontaminating suit. Rest is advised. And we didn't get a message saying that our materials had been ruined, so those rare metals should still be safe despite the fact that the containers themselves got ruined. curious what was the damage actually zero so the containers got room but the cargo is fine that is perfect into the UCA. So we now have some information on mules, drone syndrome, bridge babies, the BBs, and timefall. You can see all of the signs and the structures that other players have put up in this area, and it'll only get busier and busier. Looks like we're on the chiral network. And with those materials you brought for our chiral printer, we can produce supplies for you here as needed. Think of it as our way of returning the favor. Now head west, and keep on doing what you do. Good. The distro center is on the network. Sam, do me a favor. Take your BB to a private room and connect it to the incubator. Good work. Dead man, you there? Little help. Okay, Sam. Remove the pod and connect it to that incubator. It's in. Good. Uh, a temporary excess of stress. Easily addressed if we return it to its mother's womb. Mother? Uh, located in the capital, not city, ICU. Brain dead, of course. Ah, uh, you mean still mother? Correct. A still mother's womb facilitates a connection between the world of the dead and the BB. 
And you, in turn, connect yourself to a BB, granting you the ability to sense BTs. These pods were designed to simulate the conditions inside a still mother's womb. BBs need to believe they're in one at all times to function properly. However, we can only maintain this deception for so long, which is why we must periodically update the environmental data by synchronizing it with a still mother via the chiral network. There. The update is in progress. Right now, the pod is synchronizing with the steel mother in Capital Knot City and reconfiguring its settings based on the latest data. Returning your BB to the womb in this manner will temporarily reduce its stress levels. That being where it technically belongs, of course. Kid looks happy. I'll try adjusting the acetocin dosage. Autotoxemia should set in much slower from now on. <sighs> uh, you should remember that BBs are just equipment. Try not to get attached. Each one has been physically removed from its steel mother's womb. A process that renders them unpredictable and prone to failure. No BB on record has remained in service for over a year. Uh, it may need to be retired before this expedition is over. Mm. And then? You're saying there's no way to keep my BB alive? Uh, you must understand. There is still a great deal we don't know about BBs. As we expand the chiral network and recover more past data, perhaps we'll find our answers. Uh, oh, right. You asked me to look into why the BTs might be reacting to your blood. I spoke with Hartman. We should have your results soon. Anyway, get some rest. You and your BB are both exhausted. <sighs> Good night, Sam. chained up. Still can't leave. But if you can keep making connections, if you can get to me, we can go back east, back home. Thank you. I mean that. It's bad. There are fewer and fewer people in the cities these days. No one's having children anymore. But humans aren't made for living alone. They're supposed to come together, to help one another. And if we as a people can't do that, if we can't reconnect, then, well, it's like Bridget said, extinction. Come on. Rebuilding America isn't gonna get rid of the BTs. As long as they're still around, there's no escaping it. But at least we'll have hope. I'll be waiting, Sam.
waiting for you. Come and find me. This is Hartman. Since you're awake, it might behoove you to freshen up. To that end, why not take a shower? It's good for the body and soul, and also my research as it happens. And apparently taking a shower is how we're going to start the next episode, but that is going to do it for this episode of Blue Storytime featuring Death Stranding. There is a lot more to talk about, and I'm going to leave you th with this question, and it is about the Still Mothers. Now, if you've played and you know the answer to this, I, I would encourage you to just read replies and maybe leave some cryptic answers. But for those who haven't played or you're just not sure of the answer, tell me, what do you think about the Still Mothers? Are these mothers that were, were they in a coma due to an illness? Was it dooms? Was it contact with a BT? But the Still Mothers are brain dead essentially houses for these BBs and I'd like to hear your take on how maybe that came to be and what is their function in all this. So anyway, next time we will be taking a shower, we'll be reading some emails, there's a lot of good information in there and hopefully we'll learn more about BB and just what their connection is to the BTs and the Death Stranding. But hope you're still enjoying, I'm still having a blast, thank you so much for coming out, I look forward to interacting with you in the comments below and Sam and I will see you next time.